Namaste everyone from the Grey Medicals. Hope you all are doing well. We are currently facing a pandemic and amidst the tough and unproductive times, we, the medical students from different medical colleges of Nepal, have created a platform where we can learn and grow together as medical students. Grey is the color that symbolizes the transition between black and white. From knowing nothing, we are at the transition to knowing something. Hence, we have chosen the name The Grey Medicos. The Grey Medicos organizes interactive teacher-student sessions guiding novice medical students to the clinical approach to various diseases. Our session's main aim is to make medical students learn the art of history taking to reach a proper clinical diagnosis. We explore the boundless world of medical sciences through a student's eye and try to provide the learners with a clear basic concept and explain the simple reasons behind every clinical step. These guided sessions also prepare us for those questions which are asked in our Viva and furthermore other limitless questions that can arise anytime during our clinical practices. We believe our sessions can establish a bond between the learners and the presenters and also encourage our learners to come forward and step up for presenting on various topics as it will open doors to limitless benefits. So join us in studying together as a team and help us to raise this platform to the next level. Journey to be the better doctors, the Grey Medicos, thank you very much. Okay. Namaste and good evening everyone. Thank you all for finding time and visiting today's webinar. I am Trina Roniar, a third year medical student from Janaki Medical College. On behalf of the medical team, I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to our guest speaker and all the participants present here. Grey Medicals, a transition between knowing nothing and knowing something is a platform formed by collaboration of medical students from different medical colleges that resembles a colorful rainbow, which brings together bright and curious mind to discuss common clinical cases seen in our hospital setting. Today, we are going to have case discussion on topic, lower respiratory tract infection, pneumonia. It is a matter of honor and privilege to welcome respected Deepak Kumar Gupta Sar, a senior consultant pediatrician as mentor of his program. He has completed MBBS from BPKIHS Tharan and MD Pediatrics from Ames Delhi. He has also taken special training in advanced course in pediatric endocrinology and allergic asthma specialist course. Currently, he is an associate professor from Janaki Medical College. A great big thank you and warm welcome to you, sir. You. I'd also like to welcome, I'd also like to welcome Mr. Rajan Subedi, a fourth year medical student from Janaki Medical College as presenter for today's program. Without further delay, I'd like to hand over the platform to Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Srinivasa Bhani. Me, Sobin Ray. Me, four-year medical students from Janakpur Dam, and co-founder of the Medicals, and working as working committee member in the Gare Medical Team, Gare Medicals. At first, I would like to thank and welcome our respected sir, Dr. Deepak Gupta sir, for your valuable presence as a mentor in our today's webinar, in spite of your your busy schedule. It is great, sir, to have you in, a, in our webinar. After a long wait, we are able to conduct the webinar. We are excited to learn about cases. The Gray Medicals is the best medical case discussion platform for all medical students to study and learning together. I am sure that it will help you to become a good doctor because webinar help you to become a, this is the provisional diagnosis by discussion on the every topic about the clinical case. It is very much fruitful webinar. 
I am sure that today's webinar will be much more fully interactive and help us to get more deep knowledge about the webinar. And it is our duty to make the webinar more effective. And as a medical student, we must be disciplined during the webinar. The following rules and regulations must be followed during the webinar. First of all, uh, mic will be mute and camera will be turned off during the webinar. Please write your full name and your college name. If you have any queries regarding the regarding the case, you can check inbox in the chat box and it will be discussed later. Now I'd like to hand over the floor to our my friend Rajan Subedi to start the case presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sovin Regmi. Uh, my name is Rajan Subedi from Sports here MBBS, currently studying in Janik Medical College, Zonangpur. Uh, I would like to thank the Medi Grace Medicals for providing me a chance to present a case that I have always been interested. <laughs> it's a matter of honor for me to present a case with a respected sir, uh, sir uh, Deepak Gupta sir, uh, someone who have admired and uh, inspired me throughout the year. Uh, today, I believe we have a lot of learning experience from, from you, sir. We have a lot of things to learn from you. Uh, once again, uh, welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, can I push yes, you? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, sir. I'm presenting a case. I'm presenting a case of a uh, three years, eight month boy uh, named ABC, who is Hindu by religion uh, from Dhanusa Mahindranagar. The informant of this case was his mother, who is 30 years old housewife. Uh, she's educated up to the standard grade eight. The child has admitted one month back on push 22nd via the emergency ward of GMCTS. The patient was admitted with the complaints of chief for five, chief complaints of cough for five days, fever for last four days, and fast breathing for two days. Rajan, can I can I can I stop you? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Please please go back to your first slide, please. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So can you tell me the what important piece of information you get from the data you have presented in this first slide? Uh, sir, um, the sex of the child is male, so therefore some diseases they are confirmed to uh, specific sex, just like male uh, and female, they can be different uh, diseases. And uh, the same thing, uh, we can get knowledge about the informant who is uh, educated up to grade eight, therefore, uh, child born from the mother uh, who have a proper education can give the proper education, proper uh, health facilities, proper uh, medic, uh, medicine, medicine facilities uh, during her natal period. Uh, therefore, some uh, disease can be ruled out uh, from here, like uh, malnutrition uh, can be the uh, chief problem in the, in the child who has born from the mother of a uh, low uh, from the model of uh, uh, having a uh, low education. Uh, uh, so this can be ruled out from here. Great. Okay, so can you tell me why we take age of children in years and months as compared to the adults where we take like say age is 30 year or 35 year or 40 years. Why we take the age in years and months? So, uh, there is a very little differences between the age, just like uh, some uh, some diseases they are found, they are they can be seen in very early phase, like a neonatal period. We can see the common uh, problems of neonatal seizures or neonatal jaundice. They can be seen in the prenatal phase. Uh, therefore, sir, 
the age of the children has been classified according to the uh, prenatal phase postnatal phase in terms of month rather than years therefore sir we have uh, counted both the uh, years and months in this case okay so i will tell you the right answer so because if you take only 3 years let's say the mother says my child age is 3 years this could mean she is 2 year uh, 12 months or this could mean 3 year 11 months but if we go to the anthropometry interpretation 11 month difference can make huge hell and heaven difference the child can be normal for age or he can be undernourished number 1 number 2 the interpretation of vital signs for example let us say if you say child is having pneumonia based on the respiratory rate less than 2 months more than 12 months more than this this so age has to be dim uh, communicated in years as well as month because minor differences can make huge difference in interpretation of the anthropometry as well as the vital signs okay what information you have got if a child has come to the emergency department rather than the outpatient department sir question please sir uh, like this child has come to the emergency department Sir. Does it make any sense to you? He has come to the emergency and he has not come or he has not waited till tomorrow to visit the outpatient department? Sir, uh, on the basis of severity, sir, uh, serious case, uh, they are generally uh, admitted to the emergency department rather than uh, OPD. Uh, so, uh, I think so so this more of admission via emergency is there. Yeah, so itself it tells us that the child is quite sick he hasn't waited till tomorrow for the outpatient department visit so this piece of information is very important please go ahead okay uh, so from these complaints which system do you think is involved in this child the respiratory system is a, a much more prominent here uh, seeing all these sick complaints uh, Great. what else uh, Severe system, system sir. Yes, right. Cardiovascular system. Cardiovascular system. And? Uh, so there can be a GI system also? Sure, sure. Like? Like, sir. So in case of GRD, sir, uh, there is the sure. chance of uh, uh, cough because uh, during uh, sleep uh, at night, the content of gastric uh, can be shifted to the larynx and it can cause a uh, cough. Therefore, it can be a case of GI also. Sure. What else? Sir, uh, fever is there, so therefore fever can be the common symptoms of any inflammation. Therefore, uh, we can conclude that uh, it can be a systemic because uh, fever is the common symptoms of any systemic uh, inflammation. Uh, therefore, uh, Okay, so NBF. you have you have rightly said this child has three complaints and fast breathing. So basically, this tells us this child is having infective process rather than malignancy or some connective tissue disorder. Because if fever is for long duration, let's say one month, two months, then we think of some rare diseases. But here the presentation is very acute, so we have to think about the infective process involving lungs but this can be the manifestation of other system also because if we narrow our vision or narrow our thinking to respiratory system we might land up with a false or wrong diagnosis yes, can it be the manifestation of renal disease renal disease or uh, something related to inflammation of renal system it can be because a fever is a common uh, common symptoms of inflammation therefore uh, it okay. can be sometimes so. sometimes it can lead to urinary tract infection leading to renal failure leading to pulmonary edema so our thinking process should be very wide so that we can think of some those diagnosis and not just think only respiratory system otherwise patient may be falsely labeled or our thinking process may be narrowed and patient may suffer please go ahead sir uh, the chief complaints of the patient was a cough for five days fever for four days and fast breathing for two days. Uh, so history of presenting illness. According to the informant, who is his mother, child's mother, he was apparently asymptomatic five days back. Then he developed cough, which was gradual onset. 
dry and not associated with coughing out of blood, no diurnal variation, no postural variation, cough was relieved on taking medication, and no post to ship vomiting. Okay, so what information you got from this slide or this information? So regarding all the uh, history of presenting illness, uh, it can be a disease of upper respiratory tract infection because uh, cough is a common symptoms uh, from any upper respiratory tract infection. Also, it can be a, uh, illness from lower respiratory tract infection because uh, it is dry. Uh, generally, dry cough is found in bronchitis. Uh, and uh, it has a uh, complaint of no diurnal variation. Uh, therefore, we can rule out uh, some uh, uh, disease of respiratory tract. Also, it has no any postural variation. Uh, we can rule out uh, some disease from uh, upper respiratory tract. Also, the, uh, on taking medication, cough was released, released and there is also no uh, post uh, vomiting. Okay, so if you remember our broad hypothesis that what it can be a disease of respiratory system, cardiovascular system, GI system, or renal system. So if you you have rightly narrated all those points, for example, this child doesn't have any diurnal variation. What does this tell us? GRD cough mainly is in the night or yes. after post feed. So Similarly, GRD. go ahead, please. So GRD and also bronchial asthma, which can be more uh, the, the cough of the cough uh, emerging from bronchial asthma can be much more common in uh, nighttime because while sleeping, uh, the respiratory tract can get more narrowed rather than during daytime while uh, standing or while walking. Therefore, uh, the cough from the bronchial asthma may be more common during night with variation. Right. Similarly, our hypothesis was also that this could be a cardiac disease. So, if it is a cardiac disease, generally cough tends to be worse on lying down or when the child goes for the sleep. So, this also slightly rules out our cardiac hypothesis. And there was no post tussy vomiting. What do you mean by that? Why did you ask about this? So, post tussy vomiting uh, in certain uh, diseases of uh, like uh, foreign body inspiration, some foreign body inspiration in the uh, low respiratory tract, and there is a uh, highly uh, there is uh, there is a chance of vomiting after cough uh, and also in the diseases like uh, uh, bronchial asthma when there is a, uh, a, uh, aggressive cough there is a chance of vomiting also in the case of nasal drip there is a chance of uh, vomiting after cough so to rule out all this condition i have uh, I have mentioned uh, that there is no any post tussy vomiting. Okay, right. So basically, post tussy vomiting tells us that this child is having severe bout of cough, maybe pertussis, maybe some other disease. So this tells us that the cough is not severe. It looks like dry cough. But how do you exactly know that this is dry cough and not the wet cough? Because this has lots of importance. For example, dry cough means either it is involving the lung or it is in the very topmost part of the upper respiratory tract. But if child is having weight cough, then we show, we think about the involvement of the bronchus or something like that. So how do you really know that this child is having dry cough? Uh, the sputum is not there in the um, cough. Uh, generally, child uh, uh, don't expect it. They usually sallow it. And also in this condition, there is uh, no sputum mixed with mucus. It was uh, dry with a dry tongue. Uh, therefore, uh, the history has taken is in dry cough. Okay, so basically you ask the parents what is the nature of the cough? Is it sukha koki <laughs> or this is like moist cough, jhar jhar on it? Or you can ask when the child passes the stool, does it contain some mucus? If child doesn't have diarrhea and it contains a lot of mucus, this tells us this child can have moist cough or wet cough. So in summary, this child has dry cough, which is for the last five days which is, looks like moderate in, in intensity without diurnal or postural varies. Please go ahead. Yes. So he also had a fever after one day, which was measured 100.4 Fahrenheit on axilla, which is sudden onset, high grade associated with chills, continuous in nature present throughout the day, partially relieved on medication and not associated with brass. Okay. So can you tell me what wrong is there in this history? Uh, or can you elaborate because the words you have used looks all scientific to me like uh, 
high grade fever continuous fever the, the parents will not know about this so can you please elaborate what do you mean by high grade fever continuous fever so continuous fever is uh, uh, the fever uh, which doesn't cross the baseline or it means uh, the fever is always above the baseline and there is the no fluctuation of uh, more than 1 degree celsius that is called continuous in nature right uh, the, the fever is continuous throughout the day uh, uh, throughout the 24 hours of uh, period and uh, uh, the fever uh, is high grade uh, uh, on uh, because when measuring the temperature on axilla the temperature higher than uh, 100.4 is uh, uh, said as fever uh, or which is uh, high grade uh, therefore uh, uh, high grade means uh, high grade means if the temperature is more than 104 degree Fahrenheit. So that's why it's not matching. You have mentioned 100.4 and on other sentence it is high grade. So it is not matching. High grade fever means if the fever is more than 104 degree Fahrenheit. Right? So, yes, so when you elaborate all these things, try to incorporate the parents' words. Unless you are very much sure that yes, parent had measured it, it is 100, 200, 0.5, 102, 103, and not going beyond that, not going below that. Otherwise, you may uh, may land in trouble during your exam time. So it has to be very specific. Or best is to use parents' word. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. And, uh, and the fever is associated with chills. It means uh, between the uh, of febrile period there is a uh, uh, coldness and along. Uh, there is a coldness because of the regular contraction relaxation of the muscles. Uh, so generally three year child will not complain about chills, which is the complaint generally mentioned by older children like five year or six year. But yes, sometimes. But again, uh, be careful when you use this chills, rigor, because these are complaints not very common in uh, two year or three year age of children. His mother also complains of rapid fast breathing since two days, which is gradual and onset, uh, progressive in nature, uh, feel difficulty in breathing with the history of noisy breathing, uh, history of chest in drawing, uh, grunting, his sleep and appetite is also disturbed, is dull and irritable. Okay, so this is very important piece of information that this child is having breathing difficulty along with the noisy breathing. So can you please elaborate what do you mean by noisy breathing? Is it grunting? Is it a strider? Is it a straighter? Is it just nose block? What do you mean by the noisy breathing? You have to elaborate on that. So noisy breathing is an abnormal uh, breath sound. Generally, uh, generally because of the reason of uh, constrict, constriction in the airway tract or uh, um, consolidation of lung. In this case, uh, noisy breathing uh, uh, refers to crackles or crepitation uh, because no, no, no. of what the you are going to the pathophysiology. I am asking what the parents told you or what the parent uh, gave you the information that noisy breathing regarding noisy breathing. Uh, so irregular breathing, uh, which, uh, which which can be heard uh, outside, just like uh, uh, okay, uh, like if the parents say "mero bacha lai ghar ghar boy," so then you have to ask whether this is. <gasps> This is a strider, or this is <coughs> this is grunting, or this is this is just like nose blow. So you have to uh, take out this piece of information because this is very important. Just by noisy breathing, this could be wheeze, this could be a strider, this could be a straighter. So you have to extract that data from the parents. Very good. Anyway, what do you mean by progressive in nature? So progressive you have to quantify the severity, you know, just by fast breathing or progressive doesn't mean anything. So what difficulty child is having exactly? I'm not getting the severity status at this point. So progressive, so progressive means uh, the symptoms is working day by day. Uh, okay. And uh, um, uh, 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 he, has, he has complained of, uh, his mother complained of hurried breathing, uh, difficulty in breathing dysopnea. Uh, so you can say due to fast breathing, whether he has difficulty in feeding, whether he has difficulty in sleeping or he has difficulty in trying. So you have to quantify what is the level of severity. So in adult, it is very easy to say that he's not able to climb the stair. He's not able to walk on the flat surface. He's not able to go to the gym. Similarly, in the childhood, you have to quantify, try to quantify it. Not may not be exact, but you have to tell 
he is having breathing difficulty at rest or whenever he is feeding the breast he is not able to swallow because for the because of the difficulty so try to extract that data so it tells to the examiner you are really trying to quantify the severity okay please go ahead there is no history of crying uh, difficulty of swallowing hoarseness of voice mouth breathing uh, no history of runny nose sneezing ear pain or ear discharge nasal deviation foreign body inhalation there is no history of vomiting tickling sensation in rawness of throat no history of rashes over the body and no trauma over the chest no history of cyanosis blues discoloration of lips and extremities no history of lethargy and no episodes of unconsciousness okay <laughs> you have elaborated very nicely but there are few points no parents will tell you that there is no history of nasal deviation how the parents will know there is nasal deviation or not you get my point yes, nasal deviation is the examination finding or unless the ent surgeon has told the parents that your child is having deviated nasal septum and rather saying no history of foreign body inhalation you can say there is no history of choking episode yes yeah okay sure go ahead please Cell differential diagnosis. Okay, so based on your history, chief complaint and history of presenting list. So, what do you think? What this child is having? Sir, he can have a upper respiratory tract infection, uh, also lower respiratory tract infection, uh, like uh, uh, tonsillitis uh, because there is cough. Uh, it can be laryngitis. It can be bronchitis. Okay. It can wait, be asthma, wait, wait, wait. Let, 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 let's let's revise the upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract. Let us say, suppose somebody is having rhinitis. What will be the complaint? Uh, rhinitis, sir. Uh, sir, uh, sneezing. Sneezing and Coughing. there is nasal discharge. Very discharge. good. If somebody is having pharyngitis, then what will have? What will be the complaint? So there is also coughing. Uh, spot may uh, discharge. Uh, difficulty in uh, swallowing. Fever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he will have basically pain in the throat, some uh, pain during swallowing, some fever. Okay, uh, lower down. If you go to lower down to the epiglottis, sir, uh, laryngitis. No, no, epiglottis. Epiglottitis, yeah. So, what will be the complaint? What will the parent will tell you? Uh, sir, difficult in swallowing. Uh, okay. Uh, hoarseness of voice. Voice may change. Mm -hmm. uh, fever. Okay, so there will be high grade fever, drooling of saliva, difficulty in swallowing, and some change in the voice. Okay, good. Lower down, larynx. Larynx, sir. Larynx. Sir. There will be the uh, hoarseness of voice, difficulty in swallowing. Uh, no, now the parent, the parent won't tell you the difficulty in swallowing because the gastric or the gastric esophagus has gone on that side. So the parents will basically complain you change in the voice, coughing like dog. Okay, in the bronchitis or bronchial involvement. So in bronchitis, sir, and there will be cough with a uh, sputum. Sputum, right? And in the uh, pneumonia, if you go down to the bronchiolitis or bronchiolitis, then. What, sir? In the bronchiolitis, if there is inflammation of bronchioles, then. Sir, uh, difficult in breathing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there can be dry cough also or cough with sputum, uh -huh. a mucoid cough, and fever is also the common symptoms. And in the pneumonia, in the alveolitis? So in the alveolitis, uh, again there will be the difficulty in breathing, also uh, abnormal noisy breathing. Um, so now there won't be any abnormal uh, noisy breathing, there will, there will be fever, some cough, but more of breathing difficulty. So if you fit this patient out of, we have discussed from the nose to the alveolus, where does this fit this patient? Where do you want to fit this side? Sir, lower respiratory tract, sir. Okay. More this this child, does this child has change in the voice? No, no sir. More change in does this child has barking cough? No, sir. Uh, generally no. dry cough. Yeah. He doesn't have barking cough, he doesn't have change in the voice, he doesn't have drooling of saliva, 
so important upper respiratory tract uh, causing fast respiration is out so most probably this child is having low respiratory tract problem like uh, pneumonia or maybe bronchitis or bronchiolitis but which are uncommon ones. okay what else this child can have apart from the respiratory tract sir uh, uh, cancer uh, bronchial cancer sir bronchogenic cancer engine <laughs> cancer hold on hold on hold on this child have just the history of four five days so we'll think for acute illness right now bronchial cancer will have symptoms for the long duration maybe one month two month three month older children or maybe adult okay could it still be cardiac disease like say, let's say uh, bsd having some respiratory tract infection or atrial septal defect respiratory tract infection because these children are these children have tendency to have recurrent infection of the respiratory tract so still it can be ventricular septal defect or some other uh, asynotic congenital heart disease because you have said there is no cyanosis in the history so we'll assume there is no cyanotic heart disease so this child still have heart disease on top of that he could have upper respiratory tract infection okay so can it still be your renal cause uh no sir less likely because it doesn't mother didn't tell you about the urine urinary change or decrease in the urine output okay go ahead please so primarily respiratory tract infection or some asynotic congenital heart disease on top of that he is having some respiratory tract infection yes sir sir past history uh, there was a history of similar illness one year back and uh, was admitted to the hospital for five days and was cured after medication uh, there is a history of previous uh, nebulization no history of tv okay so what does this tells us he has history of previous nebulization sir what what important idea you get out of this history there is history of previous nebulization um so respiratory tract uh, okay what this nebulization contain generally what does this nebulization contain so sal butamol sir yes, right so maybe he had some uh, wheezing episode in the past so this could be a wheezing episode in the past for which he has been admitted so how do you know this child had pneumonia or something else from the past history like this child has been admitted for the five days so did you try to extract why he has been admitted uh sir uh, there can be recurrent infection so therefore uh, one year back uh, there is a similar illness of a respiratory tract therefore he can be more uh, immune uh, he can be more prone to the low respiratory tract infection no no no, no. Uh, i want to know whether he has really had low respiratory tract infection in the past so how do you know whether this child has upper respiratory tract lower respiratory tract or bronchial asthma so you have to elaborate so if this child had fever cough fast respiration we required iv antibiotics admission this means child had pneumonia or if this child has just has cough fast breathing required nebulization and he got well for the next one or two days this means child has some wheezing episode you get my point yes, so you have to extract that data whether he has pneumonia or just wheezing episode or asthma like episode yes, okay go ahead please so both history uh antenatal history uh the age of the mother was 26 years uh preemie gravida four antenatal visits uh, was done weight gain and pregnancy 5 kg iron folic acid and calcium were taken tetanus toxoid vaccine was taken twice no history of fever no history of diabetes mellitus hypertension and other chronic diseases no history of smoking and alcohol diet is taken uh, diet taken is inadequate due to low income go ahead please go ahead so natural history uh, normal vaginal delivery in jmct Yes, full term baby with weight five two point five kg. Baby cried immediately after birth. Uh, breast feeding started after one hour of uh, delivery. Uh, no history of any congenital abnormalities. No history of uh, NICU admission. Uh, Postnatal history. No history of neonatal jaundice and neonatal seizure. No no history of hospitalization. And 
Wait, wait. So can can you tell me why do we ask this natal, antenatal, natal, and postnatal history? What is the importance? Why do we ask in pediatrics? So whether the mother has given all the immunization or not, uh, whether uh, the, the mother has taken all the required supplements or not, like uh, iron, folic acid, and calcium, all the uh, dating has been done or not, uh, all the uh, UHC has done or not, all the... Uh, if if uh, if he, if she has taken any uh, 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 drugs that can uh, cause uh, congenital abnormalities, so uh, to know all of that uh, has been elaborated. Okay, right. So basically, we ask antenatal, natal, or postnatal history so that we can know whether this child is having this illness has any relation with the natal, postnatal, or uh, perinatal history. For example, if a child has repeated episodes of pneumonia. This could be simply carrying over from the neonatal period. For example, a child has been born preterm, you know, preterm before 37 weeks. Yes, he has gone to the neonatal intensive care unit. He has been ventilated for the long time and he then he has been discharged. It means there was some lung injury during neonatal period and this child is predisposed for the repeated respiratory tract infection. This could be one. Or sometimes children have high bilirubin, jaundice, and then later on develop some sequelae due to because of that because uh, leading to cerebral palsy. So basically, we want to relate whether this child has this illness because of the natal or perinatal problem. You get my point? Yeah, yes, so, sir. So you have to emphasize, for example, in this child is having pneumonia. And if you think this child is having repeated pneumonia, so we have to extract the data, whether he has been admitted in the NICU, he had been ventilated. So this could be sequelae of that illness. Please go ahead. Uh, developmental milestone are appropriately and is correspond to the chronological age. Okay. So immunization history. A child is fully immunized up to date as per the expanded program of immunization launched by Nepal Nepal government. Okay. So please go back. So out of all those vaccines which is given by the national immunization schedule, which vaccine will be important to prevent? Lower respiratory tract or pneumonia in children? Uh, DPT? No, no, no. You have to specify. DPT means diphtheria doesn't prevent. So, what vaccines really prevent pneumonia in the so community? DPT, so, BCG? No, BCG is for tuberculosis. Measles, uh, rubella, they are also the. Uh, Yes, Operate yes. Respiratory tract infection, so it can be MMR. Yes, no, 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 measles, particularly measles. BCG, you know, so, so pneumococcal pneumonitis. Yes, pneumococcal. So BCG, pneumococcal, pertussis, yes, hemophilus influenza B. So can you tell me when this pneumococcal vaccine was introduced? Because the child age is three years and eight months. Yes, sir. So has he received pneumococcal? What do you think? So it is, so it was given in, uh, Sixth, tenth uh, uh, month, uh, and uh, sorry, sixth, sixth and tenth week and ninth month. Uh, therefore, the okay, baby. So I'm sure you have asked, but uh, this pneumococcal was introduced in 2015, 16, in around 2015 and 16. So, if the child is of 10 years, so you have to be very careful when you say he has been immunized according to this and he has received pneumococcal, because pneumococcal has been received uh, introduced in Nepal around 2015 and 16. So he must have received, I'm sure. Yes. But sir. you have to look at the chart. But if you don't know, then better to say that the parent haven't brought the immunization card and they have visited according to the uh, schedule which has been asked by the uh, immunization center. Center. Okay, go ahead. So nutritional history, uh, exclusively breastfeeding for six months. Uh, cow milk is also used in bottles for feeding. Winning started after uh, six months. Not enough calorie intake, less than 900 kilocalories per day is for the body weight. Okay, wait. So, you see, when you say that the cow milk has been introduced, so you have to say whether this is dilute, undilute. So, was it neat or it is diluted? You don't know. So, don't when, so you have to ask actually and there is no word now meaning we say this is the complementary feeding because we are not weaning from the breast we continue the breast feeding as well as 
other feed. So we have to say complementary feeding started after six months. Yes, and whenever you say that this is the calorie intake, so you have to tell exactly what is his caloric intake. For example, he's taking 900 kilocalorie, then you have to say his expected kilocalorie intake is, uh, let us say, 1400 kilocalorie, and then you have to say he's taking this gram of protein against the recommended protein intake of, let us say, 20 grams, so he's deficit by this. So just he's taking 900 calorie doesn't mean anything. You have to say the reference intake also. In the examination, you yes. get my point. Yes, sir. You say he is taking two thousand calorie. I don't know what is the required caloric intake for this child. So you have to tell against this he is taking this much deficit by this much or excess by this much. You get my point. Yes, sir. Suppose he is taking protein of four gram and recommended is twenty gram. So he is deficit by sixteen gram. So you have to mention that. Please go ahead. So the family history. Uh, there is no history of TV, uh, leprosy, or uh, hepatitis, asthma in the family. Uh, no history of genetic disorder. Uh, Socioeconomic history. Uh, lower middle class family. Uh, a house with uh, inadequate ventilation. Hand pump for the water source and use it without filtering. Okay, please, please go back to the slide. No, no, next, next one. Okay, this one. So, better to say whether he is poor or not. In the Nepal, classification of poor is if your daily income is less than $1.9. It means around 220 rupees. So, if he is below that means a laborer uh, earns around 400 to 500 rupees per day. So, if he is below that, you say he is poor. If he is above that, you have to say he is earning this much per month. He has this, this kind of uh, job. He is earning this much. He is educated this month. Because exact classification in Nepal is not there, like in India, lower, upper, upper, middle, high income, like that. We are just having poor people or not poor people. Or you can say he is educated to this much and he is earning this much. That will be safer in your examination. Yes, sir. So examination. Uh, Please go back, go back, go back. Housing condition, have you narrated? No. Why housing can condition is important in uh, low respiratory tract infection? Sir, uh, the crowding uh, uh, due to the inadequate ventilation, there can be the crowding of uh, family members, which can lead to the uh, uh, low respiratory tract infection. Right. right. So you have to say how many rooms are there, how many people are there. So it will be more important because if it is a case of diarrhea, then hand pump becomes important. If it is a case of diarrhea, then number of rooms, number of people become important. So you have to uh, play around your case, what you are really trying to convey to the examiner. Yes. Sir. Okay, go ahead, please. Examination, uh, general condition, a child is ill looking, uh, irritable, move around, uh, examine on the sitting posture, vitals, temperature 102.4, uh, respiratory rate 60 beats uh, breath per minute, uh, abdominal thoracic respiration, pulse rate uh, 120 beats per minute, uh, normal in rhythm and character, uh, blood pressure 100 per 80 mm of mercury, measured on right branchial artery and supine position. Okay. So, what information you got from this slide? Uh, sir, the child is sick, so he, uh, the, the, he is ill looking uh, because of a uh, a fever uh, because of uh, uh, difficulty in breathing, uh, uh, he is irritable in nature. Uh, he has a restlessness in uh, nature, therefore, uh, he is moving around uh, and uh, examining the vitals. Uh, he has a fever uh, of 102.4, uh, increased respiratory rate, uh, which is 60 uh, breaths per minute. Uh, and pulse rate is 120 beats per minute and a blood pressure is 100 uh, per 80 uh, mm of NC. Okay, so basically the child is irritable. What does this tell that there is some problem with the brain also, the functioning of the brain also. It means there is some problem in CNS circulation or oxygen supply to the brain. That's why the child is irritable and he is moving around, he is not happy. On top of that, he is also having tachypnea, 
but you haven't mentioned whether he is using any accessory muscles it will be wise to mention whether he is using accessory muscles of respiration like sternocleidomastoid or he is using there is some subcostal retraction because you must have exposed for counting the respiratory rate so it will be better that you mention there is any uh, retraction or not any flaring of ela nidai or not in the vitals in respiratory rate also when there is tachypnea when there is no tachypnea no need to mention that so there is tachypnea he is febrile he is tachycardic the blood pressure seems okay so it means this child is quite sick from this information go ahead please in the physical examination head to to examination scholarship a uh, normal prominent occiput fundanal closed a uh, hair silky no icterus no pallor no ear discharge no nasal deviation a uh, this dryness of mouth no cyanosis no clawing on nails no edema a uh, abnormal it's normal abdomen and giant area a uh, normal spine back and lower limbs okay so you know this is a case of your respiratory tract infection so prudent examination finding that you missed is uh, flaring of ela nidai you haven't mentioned about the uh, pulse of oxygen or the oxygen saturation have you measured it sir flaring of nasal ela sir is mentioned in other sites so this and okay. this there's a history of ela flaring sir okay so what was the oxygen saturation in this child uh, rajan sir uh, we have one uh, taken this taken okay, this so please whenever you encounter any case of respiratory tract infection make a habit that you measure the oxygen saturation now this becomes very important every household has now oxygen pulse oximeter because of the covid please go ahead so anthropometric measurement uh, weight 9 kg measured by weighing uh, pen height 100 cm measured by stratigraphy Head circumference thirty five centimeter measured by non stretchable tape, and chest circumference are forty two point six centimeter, which is measured by non stretchable tape. Okay, so, what is your interpretation? Interpretation is sir, uh, child is under nutrition sir uh, because uh, the he uh, is uh, already three uh, three years uh, uh, in eight month, therefore weight is not uh, up, uh, up matching there. the weight must be around uh, 11 kg according to the uh, data and uh, height uh, is around 100 cm is i think uh, uh, not uh, bad and head circumference is i think is also uh, not bad but i think chest circumference is uh, quite uh, uh, okay so so this is not the way to narrate to the your teacher or examiner so whenever you say that the weight is 9 kg you have to say the expected weight is 14 kg according to the who growth reference chart and uh, so it is this much percent let us say he is 9 kg expected is let us say 14 kg so he is 60% of the expected according to the who reference chart so he falls in this grade of malnutrition according to iap or according to who similarly if the height is 100 cm and the expected is 106 cm let us say so it is 94% of the expected so it is normal for his age according to the who growth reference chart but head circumference is 35 cm do you think a 3 year child will have head circumference of 35 cm uh sir uh, what is the head circumference at birth So thirty-three to thirty-five centimeter. Yeah, exactly. So uh, a three-year child will have almost around, uh, let us say, forty-eight or forty-nine or even fifty, because by one year it becomes forty-five to forty-seven. So maybe you are right. Maybe child has microcephaly. Okay. So what what is the interpretation? Is weight is low, height seems okay for me, and the head circumference is very low for me. So. what do you think is he having acute malnutrition or chronic malnutrition sir uh, sir he might be having a uh, if the mal- height is normal yes sir. and the weight is low so what do you think acute malnutrition or chronic malnutrition uh, <clears throat> sir uh, i think uh, according to bmi i think uh, he might be of acute sir okay let us let us go very simple Suppose if you do not eat for one month, so what will happen to your height? Will it decrease 
or it will remain same sir i think not decrease sir it will not decrease or at most it will not grow and what will happen to your weight sir so weight uh, i think uh, it will be decrease sir it will decrease so in acute malnutrition your weight will decrease far far more than your height so if a child is having acute malnutrition for whatever reason he is ill he is not eating money is not there something is wrong in the family so he will have acute loss in weight that is called acute malnutrition yes sir but if child is sick for long duration for example this child is having heart disease this child is having chronic kidney disease he is not eating for 6 months his height will also be low so this import this piece is very important this child is having low weight as compared to the height which seems reasonable okay but his head circumference is low maybe i think your measurement was wrong but if you take it okay if it is correct then can you think a disease which can involve the head circumference and weight also and child is having two episodes of pneumonia um, i don't think so there is any disease sir okay let <laughs> if the child is having hiv so in hiv child head circumference will be low he will have pneumonia he will not grow but obviously height will also be involved but if you think some disease then hiv is likely okay go ahead please so system examination uh, upper respiratory tract examination a uh, nose uh, failing of nasal ela is seen ear sinuses no tenderness of frontal or maxillary sinus uh, pharynx uh, posterior wall appears to be congested uh, lower respiratory tract infect uh, examination chest examination uh, inspection uh, chest is uh, bilaterally symmetrical elliptical in shape uh, chest movement decreases on right side uh, with respiration uh, centralized trachea uh, both nipples are at the same level epical bit is not seen uh, no any uh, scars so dilated veins and sinus chest in drawing okay so if trachea is central and there is decreased movement of the right side so what is the interpretation sir it can be sir decrease movement therefore it can be the consolidation in the uh, right uh, side of lungs right suppose if there is pleural effusion on the right side there will be decreased movement but what will happen to the trachea uh sir because the pleural effusion of the trachea will be left right to the opposite side yes so this is very important this child is having central trachea but there is decreased movement on the right side it means whatever pathology is in the right side it is not causing mediastinum to move either to the opposite or to the same side so the likely from this piece of information only i can say this child is having probably consolidation on the right Please. side yes sir great and he is having chest in drawing also yes sir okay go ahead please sir palpation or uh, there is no tenderness uh, normal temperature over the chest uh, chest expansion decrease on right side uh, vocal fimitus uh, could not be elicited for cousin uh, dullness was felt on the right mammary infra axillary and uh, infra scapular region resident has failed on uh, on both uh, right and left supra clavicular infra clavicular axillary and supra scapular region uh, escaltation bronchial sound uh, bronchial uh, breath sound was heard on mammary mammary infra axillary and infra scapular region uh, crackle sound predominant uh, vocal resonant uh, could not be elicited and uh, no other uh, added uh, sounds were heard okay wait wait so his right side is not moving trachea is central and there was bronchial breath sound so what is your interpretation he has pathology on the right side which is not causing mediastinum to move either to the opposite or same side which tells us this child is having probably consolidation yes, on sir. top of that he go, you got decrease percussion note and bronchial breath sound so what is your interpretation what this child is having sir there can be sir any uh, deposition of fluid or uh, uh, solidification of the uh, long parenchyma since uh, there is a uh, sound bronchial breath sound uh, generally common in lungs uh, uh, of uh, uh, this is this side of uh, lung uh, which has uh, low ear or the earless earless part or solid part therefore i can rule out uh, Uh, um, the disease like pleural effusion here because okay, uh, suppose this child has effusion on the right side which can cause decreased movement on the right side so this can cause dull percussion note 
if there is minimal effusion it may not move the trachea but if you are getting bronchial breath sound it tells us this child doesn't have pleural effusion what will happen to the breath sound if he is having effusion uh so i think so uh, sound will again be bronchial sir so, so no, sound there will be no classification or it will be minimally heard so can you elaborate what is bronchial just in the summary what do you understand by bronchial breath sound sir bronchial breath sound is sir abnormal sound whenever the uh, uh, space around the lungs or space around the upper respiratory uh, lower respiratory tract or uh, uh, is uh, uh, replaced with fluid instead of ear then the sound uh, heard will be bronchial sound rather than vesicular sound okay so i will explain in brief so if you hear over your trachea whatever sound you are hearing we have labeled this sound as bronchial breath sound normally this sound will travel through the trachea bronchus bronchial and alveoli to the chest wall and the many sounds are get filtered and whatever sound you are able to hear over the axilla that is called vesicular breath sound somehow if your lung is solid maybe because of the infection or some other reason the same tracheal sound whatever the sound it was produced here it will be conducted easily through your lungs and the same side same sound you can hear even on the uh, over your chest wall so this sound is called now bronchial breath sound so the same sound which were able to hear initially was filtered because of the air and other thing now it was not filtered and you are able to hear so whenever you are able to hear the same sound it means this lung is not aerated you get my point yes, sir. so if you are able to hear bronchial breath sound here it means the lung is solid here if you are able to hear the bronchial breath sound here it means the lung is solid here so you are getting bronchial breath sound over the mammary infra mammary so it looks like a big consolidation to me okay please go ahead So, other system examination uh, on per abdominal examination, there is no splenomegaly, no hepatomegaly, uh, no tenderness. On serious examination, normal mental state function. On serious examination, normal heart uh, sound, uh, S1, S2 heard. No, no, go, go back, go back, go back. Go back uh, go complete blood count. Okay, so what is your provisional diagnosis now? Uh, so provisional diagnosis, sir, it can be a, a disease of lower respiratory tract or of a, a bacterial etiology, sir. Wait, 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 uh, wait, 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 wait. So initially, our hypothesis when we discussed our the chief complaint that this could be respiratory tract infection, this could be cardiac disease, this could be renal disease. So these were our broad hypothesis. So when we pass through the chief complaint, history of present illness, and examination, now we have to tell whether our hypothesis was wrong or right. So your CBS examination is normal. So does this mean this child has cardiac disease? No, sir. No, so cardiac is out. Yes, your BP sir. is normal. You didn't get any edema. So your kidney is also out. Yes, sir. So you are getting predominant signs and symptoms relating to the respiratory system. So it means this child is having infection pertaining to the respiratory system. On top of that, you are getting localized finding in the respiratory system, which is bronchial breath sound, decreased movement, so this straight away tells you that this child is having consolidation on the right side. You get my point? Yes, sir. This child doesn't have effusion because you are not getting a stony dullness. Trachea is not shifted. And on top of that, there is no decrease in the breast sound. This child doesn't have pneumothorax because trachea is not shifted. You are not getting hyperresonant node. So it means this child is having consolidation. And your history is also matching. This child is having fever, cough, and fast breathing. So our history and examination is matching. It means this child is having infection of the respiratory tract involving on the right side. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. So your provisional diagnosis is? The provisional diagnosis is we have, we have ruled out all the CBS, uh, all the CNS and all the uh, 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 renal uh, system. System. Therefore, uh, our uh, provisional diagnosis is uh, the disease of lower respiratory tract. Uh, maybe uh, uh, hmm. of uh, provisional diagnosis means pneumonia. Do you want to commit to pneumonia, or if you don't want to commit, see, lower respiratory tract infection means this could be bronchitis, this could be bronchiolitis, this can be pneumonia. So, if you are getting bronchial uh, bronchial breath sound, there is no harm in committing that this child is having pneumonia. Hmm. 
you get my point yes, if sir. there was we is bilaterally if child is infant then when you are confused whether this is bronchiolitis or pneumonia but here the finding is uh, confined to the one part so it is very clear this child is having mm -hmm. consolidation on the right side so you have to commit this child is having consolidation on the right side or pneumonia yes. Yes, you get sir. my point are you clear yes, okay so your provisional diagnosis will be pneumonia involving the right side right Yes. Now comes the differential diagnosis. So what 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 are the things you like to put as differential diagnosis? Uh, sir, uh, it can be pulmonary, sorry, uh, pulmonary tuberculosis also, sir. Right. So why it cannot be pulmonary tuberculosis? Briefly. Sir, sir. Why it cannot be pulmonary tuberculosis? What are the points for and what are the points against? Sir, uh, the, the cough is not uh, associated with blood. Uh, okay. Generally, uh, tuberculosis, uh, the cough is associated with blood. And also, um, there is a... Uh, okay, so this is a brief episode, only five days history. Hemoptysis generally not common in pediatric age group, but yes, you can say at third year that there was no blood, but brief history no contact with the tuberculosis case but the point is he is having fever cough and consolidation so this still could be tuberculosis we don't know we have to investigate so one is pneumonia bacterial pneumonia second could be tuberculosis okay yes, go ahead sir investigation yes. uh, complete blood count uh, there is a leukocytosis and increased neutrophils uh, sex x-ray Consolidation is seen, uh, which is white, radio opaque patches on the low and uh, intact costophrenic angle. And uh, there is a uh, ear bronchogram seen on the x-ray. Okay, so for those who has not seen any x-ray, so how do you interpret? So first we have to look whether this is, ab please go, go ahead, whether this is abdomen or chest. So you can see the ribs, so this is chest. So this is the diaphragm. So this is chest x-ray and you have to compare the right from the left. So you see this is very nice black shadow, normal lung looking shadow. If you compare to this side, this side is white and the, there is prominence of bronchus. Can you see this? So this bronchus is prominent. Normally you cannot see it. On this side you cannot see, but on this side you can clearly see. So this is called air bronchogram. So this is bronchus, that is air, and that's why this is called air bronchogram. So this is the hard sign for the consolidation. So this side has big consolidation on the right side. Go ahead, please. So it's provisional diagnosis. It is a case of low respiratory tract infection, uh, most probably the severe pneumonia of a right lobe of a bacterial eclosy. Okay, why do you say this is severe pneumonia and not simple pneumonia? Sir, uh, simple pneumonia uh, does not include the chest indrawing, sir, but in this case, uh, the child is uh, uh, complaining of uh, uh, all this chief compliant along with uh, chest indrawing, and therefore, uh, it's a type of severe pneumonia, uh, which is on the right lobe. See, now the WHO has changed this classification, even the chest in drawing can be a sign of pneumonia only, that is called chest in drawing pneumonia. So what are the signs of severe pneumonia? Severe pneumonia means child is not feeding, child sinosis. is vomiting, sinosis. there is sinusis, there is altered sensorium, there Amazon. is severe respiratory distress like head bobbing, severe retractions. So yes. now, can you do you want to revise this diagnosis, severe pneumonia, pneumonia? What do you want to say? Uh, sir, uh, pneumonia, sir. Okay, so this is chest retracting pneumonia because he doesn't have any uh, danger signs. So can you say, can you name few danger signs? Danger signs for sinusis, okay. uh, a convulsion, mm -hmm. uh, incapability to the uh, feeding, mm -hmm. yeah, feeding. Okay, uh, so not able to feed, vomiting, a strider in a calm child. So that's why I was emphasizing whether this child has a strider or not. So. There was no strider, I think. Yes, sir, no strider. Okay, so there was no danger sign. There is no cyanosis. I hope oxygen saturation was normal. So this child is having probably chest retracting pneumonia. So uh, this child is having chest retracting pneumonia. So how do you want to treat this child? 
मैनेजमेंट एंड ट्रीटमेंट एडमिट हॉस्पिटल इन केस ऑफ इमरजेंसी स्टेबलाइज द पेशेंट ऑक्सीजन सपोर्ट आई वी फ्लू टू मेंटेन हाइड्रेशन ड्रग्स इमोक्सीन फॉर फाइव डेज सेफ ट्रिया फॉर फाइव डेज एड्रेस न्यूट्रिशन इम्यूनाइजेशन एंड फॉलो अप Okay, let us give one by one. So, whenever a patient comes, we have to treat him symptomatically also, and we have to give the specific treatment also. So, does this child child has fever? Yes, sir. Yes. So, you have to give the paracetamol for the fever because he is having under two point four degree for a night. So, you have to give uh, paracetamol. So, is he taking orally well? So, you have to ask whether he is taking orally well, whether he is passing urine. So, is he taking orally well? no no sir so if he is not taking orally well you have to give him supplemental feed or if he is not taking at all then you have to start the iv fluid also so if he is that's why you have to ask all these things whether he is vomiting everything or not if he is vomiting everything you cannot give him oral amoxicillin he will vomit that and he will, he will not be better by two days or three days that's why those things has to come in your history if you because you know about the danger sign so it is better that you include all those things there is no history of uh, convulsion no history of repeated vomiting no history of uh, estrider in this child so if this child has come to the opd he, even if he has retraction subcostal retraction and if he is feeding well it will be good to discharge him on oral amoxicillin but because he has come to the emergency i am sure he might not have been taking orally there were parents concerned parent were uh, very anxious and on examination if he is having retraction not feeding well i will be happy to put him on iv antibiotic so uh, who says amoxicillin is fine for your chest retracting pneumonia and you can give ampicillin gentamicin if you are admitting but most of the time in clinical practice because we are using two antibiotics not availability issue so you can go for ceftriaxone also but amoxicillin if you are admitting ampigenta not improving ceftriaxone yes, okay so but this child has more problem apart from your pneumonia so what what were those problems oh sir uh, so i haven't mentioned the dose no no this child has other problem also besides pneumonia Yes, sir. This child has severe malnutrition. His weight was only nine kg, so it was uh, severe mal falling into severe malnutrition category. So, how do you want to uh, treat that child or treat severe malnutrition? Do you want to treat? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Um, so, sorry. severe malnutrition itself is a risk factor for mortality. Initially, it was included in WHO classification, but but now it has been removed. But it is the greatest risk factor for mortality. so can you think why a children of pneumonia dies can you think why a children of pneumonia dies uh, sir uh, uh, there is a low ventilation perfusion ratio sir uh, okay one well, that disease is severe anything else the pro, uh, any risk factor for mortality can you think why a child should die just general guess sir renal failure sir respiratory failure okay. respiratory failure yes uh <coughs> child doesn't eat well so child can have hypoglycemia hypoglycemia it becomes less blood pressure goes down sepsis hypoxia if he is having malnutrition if he is unimmunized so these are the risk factor for death so that's why we have to whenever the child is having severe pneumonia or having all those problems you have to admit otherwise child may die you get my point if yes, a child is having fever cough fast breathing some retraction you can easily discharge him on amoxicillin but if he is not taking well if he is having uh, seizure if he is vomiting if you do not admit child may die that's why these are called danger signs if you do not treat his nutritional status what will happen suppose if you give amoxicillin he becomes fine so what will happen if you do not take care of his nutritional status sir he will be sir more malnourished he will become more malnourished and again he will have next time pneumonia or diarrhea the immunity sir immunity decrease sir yes so that's why you have to ask about the dietary history immunization history you have to take anthropometry so this is called holistic management of the children you get my point yes sir okay sure anything else thank you sir okay welcome 
if there is any question i would like to answer if you want to ask if there is any question from anybody please go ahead you can unmute yourself and you can ask if you have any query so if there is no query i think we can stop here thank you so much sir for providing us this insightful information about case discussion on pneumonia and if anyone has any question they can post it on chat box or directly ask by unmuting themselves hello sir yes please go ahead sir i belong to pharmacy i belongs to pharmacy field okay so so can i ask sir question one question sure sure you can ask no problem sir uh, we uh, we also study about soap not uh in pharmacy field okay. soap not soap not have you any idea sir so about soap not no i have no idea yes sir yes means subjective just like history and mm -hmm. objective means investigation like cbc x ray or usg like that Mm -hmm. and assessment means what uh, diagnosis mm -hmm. and p means plan okay the same thing we are using for admitted patient that is called soap soap that is, that is for admitted patient when you are assessing a patient who is admitted okay please go ahead what you want to ask please go ahead what you want to ask ke sodna khojnu bhako sodnus um i think we have lost the connection from the question okay, question so there is one question sir can you please help oh, me oh somebody muted me i think somebody muted okay go ahead what you want sir, to ask i just only know know about uh, percussion sir okay you want I to know, know about, about the percussion. percussion see how this percussion note was observed there was a drunkard and he was at the seaside and when he woke up in the morning he want to find out where is my alcohol so he was just percussing the bottle so which contains alcohol so by that way same thing if you percuss over the chest you know where is the fluid if there is fluid it will become dull if it is air it becomes resonant just like if you percuss over the tabla or ghaira if it is hollow it produces different sound if it contains liquid it produces different sound same thing percuss over the chest if it is solid it produces different sound if it is hollow it produces different sound i hope i have answered you do you have any other query okay now i will answer the chat box sir can you please help me differentiate different breath sound so basically there are only two breath sound you have to remember bronchial breath sound and vesicular breath sound the sound when you put the your stethoscope over the trachea the sound you are able to hear is bronchial breath sound the sound you are able to hear when you place your stethoscope in the axilla that is called vesicular breath sound both the sounds have different quality for example in the bronchial breath sound your inspiration and expiration phase is equal means if inspiration is 2 second expiration is also 2 second and there is clear gap between the two and generally the pitch is also hollow like character so there is inspiration expiration and there is gap but when you go for the vesicular breath sound the inspiration you can easily hear that is 2 second let us example let us say there is no gap but the expression is very short or maybe you will not be able to hear very clearly so there is inspiration there is no gap between the inspiration and expiration and expiration is short so that is called vesicular breath sound and in bronchial asthma you have inspiration but the expiration is very long like this expiration becomes long so that is 
you are in asthma when the expiration becomes very long so bronchial vesicular and the sound you are able to hear in the asthmatic patient where the expiration is very long then there is a question difference between strider and croup breath sound a strider is basically inspiratory sound whenever there is narrowing in the upper airway it could be because of the epiglottitis epiglottitis or diphtheria same thing how can i differentiate parenchymal and vascular manifestations of lung okay so whenever you have vascular malformation around the lung for example you have evidence of clavian artery or something else then they produce localized finding more of wheezy nature so there will be more of wheezy but when you have pneumonia you have more of alveolar findings like crepes you get bronchial breath sound okay sir can you say something about the vocal fremitus again same thing like percussion you uh, ask uh, you place your hand with the alar border over the chest like this 1 2 3 1 2 3 feel the vibration felt in your hand alar border 1 2 3 1 2 3 so that is called vocal fremitus sir can we differentiate viral bacterial pneumonia if pneumonia is left untreated how long does it take to progress to severe pneumonia okay so clinically we cannot differentiate viral versus bacterial pneumonia you can guess if somebody is having running nose some cough and then suddenly he is having fast breathing and you have finding on the both side of the lung then you can assume this is probably viral or similar history in the other member of the family other member is also having like covid is a kind of viral illness but whether you are having viral or bacterial it doesn't matter if a child is having pneumonia he is a candidate for antibiotic this is the dictum whether this is viral or bacteria so there is no need to differentiate viral or bacteria unless you are really thinking of influenza when you want to find out whether there is really influenza you can give the treatment otherwise in the community or in the hospital whenever a child comes with fever cough fast breathing whether it is viral or bacterial you have to give antibiotic because if you do not give antibiotic child may die so there is no question of uh, not giving antibiotic if it is, if you think viral this will be a crime so how long does it take to progress to severe pneumonia so depends upon the organism so streptococcus staphylococcus really spread or really go to uh, severe pneumonia very fast staphylococcus aureus goes within hours so that's why you have to give whenever you get a patient with pneumonia antibiotic straight away there is no question about that uh, i think if anybody has any question other question you can ask me directly i think there are no more further questions uh, no more further questions and yes thank you sir and thank i'd you. like to request you to put some few words about today's experience and about the cremedicos program okay so the i think the program is great it really helps the student it will help not only the students who can attend but it will also help uh, the students which are not who are not able to attend by going for the recorded lecture and it will immensely help because not everybody can go to the ward these days because of the covid so i think it's a great idea great initiative and it will help a lot to the many students who are not able to attend to the ward because of the covid or something else thank you so much sir and here we share the token of love and now i'd like to hand over the platform to ravi basyal dai to put his few words namaste and good evening sir uh, good evening my teammates everyone present over here i am ravi basyal from universal college of medical science uh, before two months uh, mr sovin dai was explaining about the expected doctor uh, deepak gupta sir uh, since that day we were waiting for uh, for orina 
and we feel very excited from the starting of the webinar. We learn a lot of things from today webinar. We learn how to approach the upper respiratory tra tract infection. It's it's holistic management. Uh, thanks a lot, sir, for your valuable time. Uh, we also like to thank uh, Rajan Dai for the wonderful presentation. We would also like to thank Sabin Dai and the entire team from the Janaki Medical College. Uh, and with this, I, I would like to hand over my mic to uh, Srina Boini. Thank you so much, guys. Welcome. Thank you, sir. I think we had a very interactive and fruitful webinar today. And we wish that we can get more webinars like this and we can get to uh, invite you to the next webinar and have interactive sessions same way in future. Thank you so much, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So can we leave? Azul, please present the token of love, Azul. Is it visible? Thank you, yes. thank you, thank you for the yes. token of love. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. We would also like to hear a few words from the presenter. For presenter from me? Oh, no, sir, the presenter for today. Okay, sure. Okay. Can we in the meeting? Um, Rajan Dai. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your consideration, sir. Uh, uh, I'm again uh, very thankful for all the organizing committee of the Grey Medicals because I think it has been a uh, great platform for all the medical students or uh, all the medical fraternity uh, in this uh, uh, inter-pandemic period and post-pandemic period. Uh, and I'm again uh, very much thankful for uh, uh, for you, sir, uh, for your uh, consideration. Uh, um, and uh, uh, I think I'm looking forward for uh, such a uh, webinar again and again. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone. I think you presented well. OK, sir.